so cholesterol lowering agents we use to treat the atherosclerosis so the goal of the therapy is to lower total cholesterol and triglyceride so what should be the our target in the body to keep the cholesterol so you see in this uh, boxes we can say ldl ldl is low density lipoprotein it is bad cholesterol our target ldl should be less than 100 and good cholesterol hdl high density lipoprotein they remove the bad cholesterol from heart to the peripheral organ it should be less, more than 60 parts 60 individually in case of men it should be more than 40 in case of female it should be more than 50 and total cholesterol supposed to uh, keep in the body less than 200 and triglyceride less than 150 so if anybody do not keep it or ldl is more than 100 hdl is less than 60 total cholesterol more than 200 and triglyceride more than 150 we need lipid or lowering cholesterol agents okay so like example statin most commonly we use or hmg coa reductase inhibitor the chemical name of statin and you see the drug's name, simvastatin, erpovastatin, parvastatin, uh, lovastatin, rosovastatin. And so all of the drugs ending with a statin, right? So there are common side effects of statin. The most common side effect, liver toxicity muscle pain what else other problem or side effect headache nausea muscle pain liver damage dizziness diarrhea and fever so if any patient take the statin for a long time i dose and they come to you and said i have a pain in the right upper quadrant or patient said my urine color is yellow means jaundice or dark urine and liver function test or enzyme get up means liver toxicity occur we have to stop this medication but as a nurse we have to keep note to the doctor that patient have this complaint and this patient has a history of taking statin so other drugs we use it is called bile acid sequence sequestin like cholesteramine and azintimib and also gamfribozil niacin niacin is a vitamin b3 okay vitamin b3 so nclix board asked the question from niacin what about the vitamin b3 or niacin niacin lowered the total cholesterol basically but the side effect of niacin flushing or hot flush okay and also nausea in digestion gas formation vomiting and diarrhea so let me read other it is called cholesteramine can cause constipation sometimes diarrhea flatulence and also bad taste in mouth cholesteramine most common common problem is the constipation easy to remember 
it started by C and constipation started by C. Is the timid causes abdominal pain, back pain, joint pain, sinusitis, liver disease? Give free Brazil, cause headache, constipation, vertigo, eczema, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, and diarrhea. Okay. So, when your client is on dyslipidemia, assess from them from always keep note rhabdomyolysis. And how will the muscle tissue is excreted? Because when muscle tissue break down, it is protein and pass through the kidney. Okay, so muscle tissue break down and excreted into urine through the kidney. But when passes through the kidney and urine present with a protein, we call protein urea. So protein urea, one of the cause of the kidney problem or kidney disease, another problem is rhabdomyolysis, muscle breakdown. So some kind of lipid lowering agent can cause muscle breakdown and patient present with rhabdomyolysis. Okay. So also there's some nursing um, note, it is called nursing implications. Statin contraindicated in pregnancy and give at the night. So it is good to take medication at the bedtime or evening because cholesterol formation or deposit in the body at the night time. About the grapes fruit juice, right? Also, uh, calcium chain blocker is not to take with grapes for juice. We need to monitor liver function test. Okay. Another drugs is called Lopid. It is good to give 30 minutes before meal. Okay. So what we, oh, I want to recap it. The lipid loading agents or statin never give with grapes for juice and tell your patient to stop the smoking if they take medication i mean smoke is good tell them not to take the next groups of drugs here antipyretics antipyretics or analgesics antipyretics reduce the fever and also reduce the pain the first one drugs is tylenol we can buy it over the counter but the generic name is acetaminophen right acetaminophen basically used for mild to moderate pain for fever or arthritis or gout or also rheumatoid arthritis it is decreased the inflammation this is the indication of acetaminophen so common side effect if anybody take too much acetaminophen it can cause liver damage nausea articaria rash and jaundice before to go aspirin, I want to tell few NCLEX tips about acetaminophen. So acetaminophen do not give to the liver failure patient or renal failure patient. If anybody has a acetaminophen overdose, we use antidote and antidote is called AC uh, acetus cysteine it is the most common question in NPLEX board exam also overdose sign patient present with a weak and or weak pulse which is clammy and cold skin most common 
next medication we use we it is in part of it antibiotics are aspirin aspirin also analgesic aspirin also some anticoagulant effect and good medication for a heart so the use of aspirin basically mild to moderate pain or aspirin reduce the fever it aspirin can use for arthritis gout pain or aspirin has the properties of blood thinner right but here is the few information you must know for board exam like aspirin can cause gi upset and nausea severe allergic reaction patient present with rash hives itching difficulty of breathing or tightness in the chest hmm? shortness of breath so patient present with the anaphylactic reaction swelling of the mouth face lips and tongue also black or bloody stool confusion diarrhea dizziness drowsiness hearing loss and also ringing in the ear severe or persistent stomach pain also unusual bruising and vomiting NCLEX board asks a question if any children or infant or child take aspirin they have a chance to develop Ryle syndrome also aspirin can cause respiratory alkalosis when overdose or toxicity occur so aspirin it is good do not give with other anticoagulant so if my patient need to take warfarin or comadin it is good not to give together also do not give to the children with a flu like symptom so if my children has a flu like symptom good to go for acetaminophen rather than aspirin because aspirin can cause right symptom right and also stop that taking one week before any kind of surgical operation aspirin is contraindicated for gi bleeding or if patient complain of any kind of uh, ringing in the ear means it is autotoxicity so what is nursing implications if anybody take acetaminophen or aspirin for a long time we need to monitor liver function test also avoid with alcohol antidote for tannanol toxicity it is called acetyl cysteine so here showing four milligram or three to three point five milligram per day maximum dose of acetaminophen also educated patient take aspirin with meal or food report sign of bleeding right because aspirin has a properties of blood thinner blood thinner what next so allergic medication most commonly called antihistamine used to block the release of histamine at allergic reactions the most common allergic medication we use diphenhydramine then loratadine cetirizine fen uh, fexofenadine and hydroxyzine so diphenhydramine the over the counter we can buy all of them it is called benadryl right diphenhydramine we can use uh, orally or route is orally or used include taking with food or if anybody take with food or milk reduce the gastrointestinal upset because this medication can cause 
nausea and vomiting that we call GI upset. But if you take with food, with milk, reduce the nausea and vomiting. So diphenhydramine, this is an antihistamine that can also be used as a sedative. Okay, if you have a insomnia, you can use it for sleep. So some people come to you and say, I have a nausea and vomiting when I travel. So some travel nurse can take it if they have nausea and vomiting. Or if anybody have a sleep disorder, they can use it as well. Allergic reaction. So allergic reaction, we can use it. Usually doctor will prescribe this medication to the patient if they need to take medication to which they are allergic. For example, blood or IV uh, contrast before a CAT scan, we can prescribe for diphenhydramine. If a patient is having a severe allergic reaction, we give epinephrine, but a very beginning stage we give diphenhydramine. Diphenhydramine also can be given to reduce nausea and vomiting in case of cancer patient or chemotherapy patient. The next drug is called loratadine. Uh, Lortadine, most of the times we use orally, route is oral, use as an antihistamine, common cold and arthritis. So there's few tips you have to know about Lortadine. So Lortadine will cause dry mouth, dry mouth, nose and throat. And also Lortadine can cause trachycardia. And loratadine take on empty stomach if you want to get a good effect because food block the absorption of loratadine. And loratadine will cause drowsiness and it is good to avoid with alcohol and do not give to the nursing women. So, what about what are the fexofenadine? Fexofenadine also use oral route. Fexofenadine use as an antihistamine, common cold, and rhinitis. As like as loratadine, cetirizine, or fexofenadine, both can cause dry mouth, trachycardia and it is good to take empty stomach because food blocks the absorption like loratadine and also cetirizine, fexofenadine will cause drowsiness, good to avoid with alcohol and do not give to nursing women. So what are the common side effects for all antihistamine? Dry mouth, dry nose and throat, drowsiness, feeling fatigue, headache, sleepiness, dizziness, nausea and vomiting, and can cause constipation for a long term user. Nursing implications. So teach, edu uh, educate your patient to avoid activity, require the mental alertness, like you driving car or you dealing with heavy machineries before this good not to take this also notify doctor for if patient has a vision problem difficulty of urination or painful urination what next so anticholinergics Anticholinergics inhibit the parasympathetic nerve impulses by blocking the action of acetylcholine. So anticholinergic medication, shortly called 
and taquilinergics are the drugs that blocks and inhibit the activities of neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. So they block the action of acetylcholine at both central and peripheral nervous systems. So what are the example of anticholinergic drugs? Hmm? The generic drugs name like ipratropium bromide, atropine, and diriphenacin. So like here so common use of anticholinergic drugs as i told you anticholinergic drugs block the action of neurotransmitter called acetylcholine they inhibit the nerve impulse responsible for in involuntary muscle movement and various bodily function so these drugs can treat variety of condition for like over over active bladder to chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder let me read one by one first one is ipratropium bromide the common side effect orsen of the narrow angle glaucoma so if any patient have a narrow angle glaucoma we will not use ipratropium bromide then it can cause mydriasis acute eye pain hypotension palpitations urinary retention trachycardia then constipation bronchospasm and also paradoxical uh, bronchospasm as well so next group here atropine the name is atropine sulfate atropine a drug we use to block nerve stimulus of muscle and gland and relax the smooth muscle so atropine also used to increase the heart rate and reduce the secretion and treat the effect of certain poison hmm? because it is, it is a type of intimuscarinic agent and also type of tropin alkaloid so if you ask me what are the use of atropine okay so atropine basically uh, they uh, if anybody have a symptom to lower the heart rate or reduce the salivation also bronchial secretion before surgical operation we use atropine or as the anti dot or dot of overdose of cholinergic drugs or muscarinic muscarin poisoning we use the atropine okay so atropine basically act as a competitive and reversible antagonist of muscarinic receptor also it is called anticholinergic drugs the common side effect it can cause dry mouth blur of vision photophobia and trachycardia right next groups of drugs here is called diphenacin it is used to treat overacting bladder very important the side effect are uh, blur of vision or decrease the uh, sweating uh, leads over eating so dairy uh, i said the class of the medication anti muscarinic or anticholinergic dairy phenacin it works to relaxing the bladder muscle to prevent the urgency frequency or uncontrolled urination 
So I said overacting bladder. We use the dairy phenacin. So what are the other use of dairy phenacin? Dairy phenacin is used to treat the symptom of overacting bladder. This is the drug of choice such as incontinence means loss of the bladder control or frequent need to urinate. Dairy phenacin work on muscle of the bladder to prevent them from causing incontinence and this medicine is always available only with your uh, doctor prescription. It is not possible to buy over the counter. So what are the nursing implications? So educate your patient. This medication cause muscle uh, mucous membrane to become dry and take with a full glass of water. This is the NCLEX board exam question because these groups of drugs reduce the saliva secretion. Atropine avoid with hepatitis. Atropine should avoid with glaucoma. Atropine should avoid with gastrointestinal obstruction or decrease the liver or kidney function. Also use with some cushion when driving the car operating machineries and performing other hazard activities. It is good anticholinergic like ipratropium bromide or atropine or dirifenacin. When you take it is avoid with alcohol. And before to go the next two groups of drugs I want to recap something about the atropine. Atropine used for bradycardia, right, and speed up the heart rate. Can also be used for asystolic after epinephrine. Okay. So anticonvulsant medication and also benzodiazepine together used to management the seizure disorder, anxiety disorder, right? So the generic names, clonazepam, diazepam, lorazepam, and florazepam. So these are also a common name are called benzodiazepine. Basically these groups of drugs we use to treat anxiety so medication that end with zepam -E zepam like alpazolam clonazepam diazepam lorazepam and temazepam all is end with zepam so the common side effect feeling drowsiness lethargy also, difficult of speech or blur of speech, hypotension, and central nervous system depression. So, these groups of drugs, particularly benzodiazepine, are very addictive. It is good to use short term only and do not stop this medication suddenly or abruptly. And when the patient take these groups of drugs, watch for respiratory depression. So the common side effect, easy way to remember, A, B, C, D, and S. A stands for altered vital sign, means patient who take these groups drugs, they have a bradycardia, low blood pressure, means hypotension. C stands for a B stands for blood of vision and C stands for constipations and confusion. D stands for dry mouth and dizziness and A stands for stasis of urine and sedation. Other groups of drugs in this group anticonvulsant here we use 
phenyl twin others are phenobarbital valproic acid and gabapentin and also anticonvulsant we use carbamazepine Levitra sin is called kepa and lemotrizin. Let me explain one by one. Phenytoin do not give with food and do not take with the oral but control pills when your patient need to take phenytoin because they will not work together if you are giving this medication iv you can always you can only give with the sodium chloride phenytoin now let me talk about little bit about phenobarbital phenobarbital decrease blood pressure and respiratory rate so we have to need to check respiratory rate vitamin d supplement may be needed and valproic acid here is hepatotoxic agents also watch for abdominal cramping may cause the suicidal ideation who take valproic acid for a long time and gabapentin may cause memory problem or do not take with antacid with help with the symptoms of restless leg syndrome. Gabapentin also can use some kind of neurogenic pain reducer. So what are the common side effects of these groups of anticonvulsant drugs? They can cause gingival hyperplasia, particularly phenytoin, gum bleeding, gum hypertrophy, mild skin rash or itchy, discolored urine. Overdose symptoms may include twitching eye movement, loss of balance, feeling light headache, slow or swallow breathing, muscle stiffness. Also, difficult to speech, tremor, nausea, and vomiting, right? So other groups of anticonvulsant here, we use carbamazepine or levotraxetrum or kepa. Carbamazepine can cause dizziness, dryness, dry mouth, you see, easy to remember, all are started by D. And important is aplastic anemia. So they depressed bone marrow to produce red blood cell and patient develop aplastic anemia. And capra can cause sleepiness, weakness, dizziness, and chance of infections. Right. The other drugs we use is called lemotrizine. Lemotrizine has a anticonvulsant properties, rash, dizziness, and headache. And there are some general information we have to know about anticonvulsant. All anticonvulsant can become toxic in the body's system or cause dependence issues and all antidepressant also causes drowsiness and should not be taken with antacid which will decrease the absorption and all anticonvulsant can ele elevate the blood glucose level or may change the urine to a light rust color, but it is not dangerous to the patient. 
all anticonvulsant will still allow to the patient to have a seizure despite being a medication watch for them and do not give any this medication before electroconvulsion therapy what are the other nursing implications it is good to avoid if patient has a liver disease or if patient has a diabetes mellitus also avoid alcohol do not chewing or crush the tablet avoid taking antacid at the time with dilantin because inhibit the absorption right also we need to monitor the liver function test or liver enzyme and educate your patient and take convulsion drugs should not be stopped abruptly or suddenly tapered dose also wear a medic alert bracelet and report any kind of bruising fever or blood in the stool important to notification and also important to keep documentations so narcotics or analgesics we used to relieve the moderate to severe pain particularly first one his generic name codeine or oxycodeine and then morphine right and also mepiridine uh, fentanyl or hydromorphine so morphine, hydromorphine, mepiridine, codon, oxycodone. Mepiridine, other name is called demorol. So they have a very strong properties of narcotics or opioid. Let me uh, read one by one. Like morphine. Okay. Morphine. Uh, very strong opioid or narcotic but there's few information you have to know about morphine morphine medication uh, or we we have to hold the morphine if respiratory rate are below 10 right because morphine will cause respiratory depression and if my patient need to take morphine, mepiridine, or codon, or hydrocodone, we watch for respiratory rate and also watch for constipation. So if anybody take these groups of drugs, has a chance to develop constipation and also has a chance to develop addiction may occur with a long-term use. If any patient has a pancreatitis, we do not give them opioid or narcotic medication. The another groups of drugs here is called codeine. Okay. Codon or codeine used as a cough suppressant and take with the food to prevent the nausea and vomiting. Okay. So I said codon used as a cough supplement and oxycodone, this one, has a acetaminophen inside it and do not give if the patient has an allergy to acetaminophen, okay? But if any patient has a history of aspirin allergy oxycodone to give them it is okay all of these drugs is called narcotics the other drugs here it is mepiridine mepiridine you see mepiridine increase the intracranial pressure and also um, Mepidine do not give to the patient with a head injuries 
can increase the intracranial pressure. Now, let me talk about a little bit more about hydrocodone. Okay. Hydromorphine or reduce the respiratory rate and this is not the morphine. Name is hydromorphine but it is not a morphine. It is hydromorphine. And you cannot inter exchange between morphine and hydromorphine. Hydromorphine is many more times stronger than morphine. Very important. So like my patient finish the morphine, I give them hydromorphine. No, it is dangerous. And other thing is when we give the narcotics, we have to monitor the respiratory status. What are the um, common side effect? The risks of dependency, nausea and vomiting, pinpoint pupil, uh, diaphoresis, central nervous system depression, dry mouth, eating and rash. Here we can see the common side effect of all narcotics as like as benzodiazepine. Is you to remember A, B, C, D and S. A stands for altered vital sign, means patient present with bradycardia, hypotension. B stands for blurring of vision or bradycardia. C stands for confusion and constipation. D stands for distance of urinary bladder. We call stasis of urine or retention of urine. What next? Next groups of drugs here, it is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. NSAID or analgesia we use for pain moderate to severe we used to reduce the fever arthritis and also they have a properties of blood thinner here we are going to talk about ibuprofen indomethacin nephroxen sodium and celecoxib so all of this, we can use mild to moderate pain, fever, arthritis, or any kind of gout, or rheumatoid arthritis pain, and these groups of drugs also reduce the inflammation. You can buy over the counter, particularly ibuprofen, name is Mortrin, right? And also, NSAID, I said we use same mild to moderate pain, fever, arthritis, gout, and has the properties of blood thinner, like aspirin, like acetaminophen. So common side effect like nausea, heartburn, headache, vertigo, oligoyuria, gastric or duodenal ulcer, epigastric pain, diarrhea, dizziness, hypertension, and skin rash. Okay. And next here, opioid like tremadol, very strong pain medication, but need to check respiratory depression. Monitor the respiratory status is important and also can cause dizziness, nausea, and vomiting. The other medication is called Tripten, Tripten, prescribed for migraine headache, like Sumatriptan, okay? Zolpi, Tripten. But this medication has a high chance of hypotension, trinitas, photophobia, syncope, and dry mouth. What are the muscle relaxant we use, right? Muscle relaxant we use like Soma, 
uh, it is called methocarbazol and cyclobenzaprine or carisoprodol. Common side effect drowsiness, bronchialisma, and psychological dependency and nausea. Here we are going to talk some nursing implications or intervention education about narcotics, about NSAID, about opioid and trip ten. Let me read one by one. Narcotics report the problem if patient present with urination such as pain difficulty of urine, urinating, frequent urge to urinate, or decreased urine output and constipations, headache and diplopia, nightmare, maybe sign of overdose. If any overdose occur, we have to use the antidote. All narcotics has a common antidote is called naloxone. Avoid with the other medication that is that cause central nervous system depression. Also avoid with a MAO, MAO inhibitor, monoamine oxide inhibitor with antihistamine like diphenhydramine, loratadine, cytosine, phenoxyphenidine. Uh, also other muscle relaxant. NSAID or analgesic, take with food, this is so good. Monitor for sign of bleeding. Avoid use of aspirin and anticoagulant. Avoid operating heavy machineries and also contraindicated if patient has CABZ. Some information about opioid or narcotics. Tapered the dose when time will come to discontinuing. Right? And trip 10, avoid with ischemic heart disease, uncontrolled hypertension, stroke, also TI, transient ischemic attack or Peripheral vascular disease. What next? So osteoporosis medication. So the medication that we use to prevent the bone erosion. Used to prevent and management of osteoporosis. So generic drugs name bisphosphonate. So bisphosphonate slow the rate of bone thinning and increase the bone density. Very good medication for the prevent the osteoporosis. And bisphosphonate such as um, such as I said, risendronate, most common one, or bisphosphonate example is albendronate or Ibendronate or bone viva are used to treat and prevent osteoporosis and prevent the bone thinning, which occur with the bones, bones loss, calcium, and other minerals that help to keep them strong and compact bone. So, again, how these groups of drugs work? particular bisphosphonate are the groups that target to the area of higher bone turnover. So the osteoplastic cell which breaks down an old bones also absorption the bisphosphate phosphate, phosphate drugs. And this their activity is slowed down osteo plastic activity and stimulate osteoblastic activities because one type of bones is destroying another is bone forming and this reduce the bones breakdown particularly. Let me read it again. Albendronate 
albendronate, irritations and ulcer of the esophagus. Albendronate can cause abdominal pain, constipation, gas formation, and joint or muscle pain. So, albendronate, ibendronate, or ricendronate, all is common indication post menopausal osteoporosis or osteoporosis in men and women or Paget disease. Particularly, ibendronate we use for post menopausal osteoporosis and Paget disease. But albendronate use osteoporosis in men and women both, also Paget disease. There's some information I want to share with you about albendronate. Albendronate bone, I mean, the, when you give it to the patient, patient education is important. Albendronate bone pain may occur as a side effect or always tell your patient sit up for 60 minutes after taking this medication or take this medication on empty stomach whatever the l um albendronate or albendronate again particularly albendronate hmm. caffeine or orange juice decrease the absorption of albendronate so it is good not to take caffeine or orange juice if your patient need to take albendronate as like as ibendronate alben albendronate also after the day sit up for 60 minutes sit up and take on empty stomach because of better absorption and ricendronate common problem bladder infection and also benign enlargement of prostate in men ibendronate can cause back pain indigestion bronchitis bones joints and muscle pain next drug selective estrogen receptor modulator they slow the bone thinning and cause some increase in bone thickness who they are it is reloxifen used in the women only not for the men orally we can use it pure this drug has side effect hot flashes joint pain flu like symptom edema and muscle pain some hormone therapies like calcitonin calci it is calcimar but name is generic name is calcitonin given via nasal spray intramuscular or subcutaneous calcitonin can cause running or stiffy nose back pain nausea and vomiting hormone therapy estrogen and testosterone estrogen used only in women who are post hysterectomy means remove the uterus also given orally estrogen patch we can use vaginal ring we can use skin uh, cream we can use so estrogen side effect stroke blood clot increase the breast cancer rates gallstone headache nausea vaginal discharge fluid retention weight gain and breast tenderness testosterone given injections can give gel patches only for men so two to three weeks intramuscular injection or night patch also good and daily gel so testosterone sometimes can cause edema of the hand and feet 
prostate hyperplasia, gynecomasia, and also painful ejections, but uncommon. Liver dysfunction is common. So what is nursing implications? So particularly, um, uh, Elendronate here, can call, uh, other name is called bone viva, set up after medications, sit up medication for 30 minutes, take empty stomach, take with a full glass of water and take early in the morning. So this is in every in, in information important for our licensing board exam. Let me recap it, educate your patient Albendronate or Eldronate, El, um, Ibendronate or Eldronate to take or bone viva, sit up after medication for 30 minutes, take on empty stomach and take with full glass of water and take M early morning. Avoid if patient has a kidney disease and also increase the calcium and vitamin D in the diet or by supplement.